I think for many of us in this room, um, you don't quite realize how much you've been blessed with your education and the ability to think critically and in the abstract. And for almost all of these inmates, um, that, that, that's the striking fact, a policy of education. Um, and so you'll see with the con with um, the continuity of the conference and how it progresses, you'll hear initially from Pastor Benny and Johnny Perez, um, two former remnants, which um, will be introduced in more detail by um, Colby Kelly, who spent time in Rikers Island and endured a large space of hardship. And you'll hear from the ABC, um, the Arizona Department of Corrections, and then eventually at the end, um, from a Title I Phoenix teacher um, who's had a tremendous life story and with her big heart has made a lot of change. And then Memo Rubla and Sophie Eshar, um, two people that are involved in organizations that are helping struggling students. And you'll see how it comes full circle. Um, and I wanted to conclude with a short a short story. Um, my family and myself had the opportunity to visit South Africa a few years ago, and we spent a day in Robben Island where Nelson Mandela spent some 17 years. And we walked around the yard, we walked around his cell, which um, was about your wingspan. You could barely you could barely turn around, in fact. Um, but what was striking and jaw-breaking and heartbreaking was the fact that the inmates worked day in and day out in a limestone quarry. And if you don't know, um, extended exposure to limestone actually deteriorates your tear ducts. And Nelson Mandela, after an ungodly amount of time spent just cracking limestones that were put to little if no use, um, actually lost the ability to cry. Um, and if you let that sink in, I think that's the height of human experience. And after having lost everything, he also lost, I think, the one thing that you could really try to process through with. And after a hellacious some 24 years behind bars, he came out not with, not with malice, but with compassion. Um, and not with anger, but with loving kindness. And whether you're a current student, a school teacher, um, a former inmate, I think we can all derive a lesson from the heart of that story. And whether you're having the best of days or, or the worst, um, I think that knowing that we're all connected, all of us together, we should have a spirit of loving kindness and not, and not malice, regardless of, of where you are. Um, and without further ado, I'll let Dr. Wells, who is the director of prison education programming, Take over. Welcome, everyone. We, we actually have about 200 people registered. Um, usually 10% don't show up for some reason or another, but we do believe people will continue to come throughout the day, and we are grateful that all of you have come here so early this morning. Um, it's wonderful to see people that I know and people that I don't. Um, this is our, well, it's our seventh program, our Prison Education Conference is the sixth one that I've been involved with. Um, three and a half years ago, I started directing the Prison Education Program, Programming at ASU out of the English Department. It was then called Prison English Programming. We changed the name immediately to Prison Education Programming because um, we were teaching out of many departments. And when I inherited this program, there were eight classes at two men's prisons in Florence, two state prisons. And now we have 30 classes, so we've grown tremendously. Um, interest has burgeoned all over the place. We are now teaching also in the Perryville Women's Prison. And also this semester, we just started classes at Adobe Mountain School for, uh, for juvenile offenders. So we are really thrilled with um, the outpouring of volunteerism and the quality of the volunteering that is going on. Um, and I think that there's an awareness growing all around the country. You see more and more newspaper articles and other, other things that are, uh, that are demonstrating this awareness. And of course, our next goal is, is sometime, somehow, to get 
college credit for these, some of these classes and not just not just uh, volunteer programs, but that's down the road. Um, by way of thanks, I want to acknowledge the English Department and the School of Social Transformation for financial support as well as the uh, student government and certainly the officers of the Prison Education Awareness Club who sponsor this conference every year. Um, they have been putting in lots and lots of work since way back in September. Um, but due to special circumstances, I would also like to especially thank um, Winter Roth, one of our vice presidents, who has really done the lion's share of the, of, of the work behind the scenes in planning and preparation and carrying through. And also, I am very pleased to announce that she will be the uh, incoming president of Peace next year. So uh, this year, everybody was new because everybody, all of our officers graduated last year. So they, these officers had a big learning curve but um, not getting to do it for two years together. But next year, we'll have a lot more continuity in that, and it always makes it easier on them. The other thing that I wanted to uh, acknowledge is that due to the growth of this program, um, ASU is now uh, providing another uh, a co-director of the programming, and she is going to speak to you next. Her name is Nala Brewer. She teaches math at the Florence Unit and has been doing so for some time. Did you also teach it on? Just no. more, just more, two different days or something. Okay, so, um, so as you can see, we're, we don't just teach English, you know, we teach a, a lot more than creative writing. I did want to, to notice though that the, the poem that you were handed when you came in or should have been handed, uh, we're very proud of that because most of this programming started with the, prison, with the pen project that came out of New Mexico um, eight years ago. And as students have taken the Penn Project, which is um, a long distance project where students, um, student writers, prison writers, send to our interns and get feedback on their writing, whether it's essays, scholarly articles, poetry, or whatever. Um, and the, the poem that I handed out to you was sent to us by one of our original Penn Project writers in New Mexico. And um, he just uh, won with it. Uh, the 2017 second place for poetry in the uh, Pan America annual prison writing contest. I mean, these people are, are amazing writers. There's so much talent behind bars, and there's no reason not to tap it and create an environment of, of progress and growth within that environment. So um, I did want to read you a couple of things and uh, written by inmates. I won't read that one because it's so long it would take the entire time. Um, this was printed in our newsletter last summer. It was written by an inmate in Florence and we got permission to print it. And uh, he, he, he's going by the name of Running Bear, but it's not really his name, he's not even Native American. But uh, <laughs> um, he wrote this about the education offerings at Florence. It's called Escaping Back to Earth. They drop you on this totally flat planet where everything around you is dark gray, lead blue, dirty white, or mottled brown. They move your body from place to place like a chess piece, but the game has no meaning or end. The language around you disintegrates into a foul, furtive mumbling and grumbling punctuated by the profane. There is a lot of howling. And then, for some reason unknown to you, you sign up for an education class and begin to attend. In truth, I don't think it matters what you signed up for. Learning to manage your anger or your bank account from a programs officer, or learning to play the guitar or music theory from a peer educator, or learning about the social sciences and writing from a pair of bright, eager ASU students. One day, everything starts to change. There is something new to talk about besides the drug-infested fables and the endless stories about guns and cops and robberies, the stories you hear every day. You begin to think about a new riff by Eric Clapton, or a political opinion you have never heard, or the fact that the places you have lived in since you were a teen were all higher than the continent of Australia's highest peak. A totally random tidbit of information that was meaningful to somebody to learn, right? And you start to meet people who can speak in complete sentences, who know what a planet is, and can talk about ratios. 
and you realize that many of your fellow inmates you have avoided or held in disdain have skills and thoughts and insights and emotions you had never seen before. Well, we can't for a while leave this place, but we can simply sign up and from within these walls soar to anywhere we want to go. You see, there has always been a well-hidden escape hatch back to Earth. It begins when you open the door with the hand scrawled paper sign that reads, Quiet, please. Class is in session. And now I turn the time over to Nala Brewer. Hi, I'm Nala Brewer, and um, I've been with ASU since 2002. And um, before coming to ASU as a graduate student, um, I was part of an NSF grant where we went to uh, inner city high schools that um, were you know, below the poverty line and struggling a lot with um, uh, single family homes and um, a lack of resources. And we brought technology and math and science skills into that high school. And um, that made a real impression on me because um, even though it was when I was in graduate school, as I look back on my life, no title, no job, no pay, nothing compares to the, um, the, the feeling of that was something important that I did in my life, you know, and, and I felt like I wanted to keep doing that. Um, so uh, before I started with the prison education program here, when I first moved to Arizona, um, there was a prison ministry with the church that I was in, and I thought, well, you know, this sounds some, some, like something I would want to do. So I got involved with that, and I was really, really scared at first because I didn't know what to expect. Um, and it was at the women's prison at Tent City when they still had Tent City. And um, I found out by through going through the process and going there that I'm actually, uh, there's nothing to be afraid of. They're constantly watching you. They're making sure that there are no, uh, nothing that could possibly harm you. Um, and I'm probably safer in there than I would be just walking out on the street. So um, I realized that, um, you know, that this, this was something I enjoyed doing. Um, so uh, one thing we have to do at ASU is we're supposed to not only teach, but we're supposed to do service work. Um, and don't tell anybody outside of this room, but I don't like committees or politics. So <laughs> I was hoping that, um, that I would get some sort of service work that felt meaningful that I could do that would contribute to our department. So when our department chair sent out an email about, um, you know, we have some openings for volunteers at the prison, I thought, oh, that's exactly, you know, what I was praying for, you know, something that I could do that would be kind of outside the university but would help the university. Um, and in doing this uh, outreach work, um, I've been able to stay with the same group of students for a year and a half. And um, that group of students, what I've been able to see is that they have a, a new sense of self-esteem, uh, a new sense of inquiry. Um, we were also able to donate um, about 500 math books that they keep in their bookshelves and they get to, um, and that was from, from ASU, so you know ASU gets to feel a part of this also. And um, uh, the other thing is that our, my department chair is 100% behind this outreach work. And um, I've even sent some updates to, to President Crow, and he sent me a, a personal thank you note stating that this um, prison outreach work, it goes along with our initiatives for the New American University. And we're in the process of trying to get them course credit for these classes. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, one of the students that I have came up with uh, a conjecture on his own. He was building dice out of equilateral triangles, meaning they all have the same length on the sides and the same angles. And he noticed that no matter what size he made these uh, dice, that every time he took the perimeter, you know, the, uh, the, the length around all three sides and divided it by the height, he always got the same number. So I was teaching them pre-calculus and I said, uh, when we were done with the course, I said, let's see if we can prove your conjecture. And the proof was fairly simple, and, um, and it worked out that the number he had measured was really, really close to the actual number. Measurement's going to give you a little bit off. So I took this project, and um, I asked my department chair and the people that are in charge of the ASU portion of the Southwestern Undergraduate Mathematics uh, Research Conference, if, since this was one of our outreach classes, if we could uh, submit 
his project to that conference. So the person in charge of the ASU portion said, well, that's okay with me, you know, but who's going to present it? I said, well, this other faculty, faculty chaperone said she would present it. He said, okay. He said, well, it's up to the people there. And so he submitted it and they accepted it. So um, one of the students is going to have his presentation um, uh, presented by a faculty chaperone at the Southwestern Undergraduate Mathematics Research Conference. And, um, and I just think that when they get those kind of uh, kudos, you know, for the work that they're doing in there. It's, it's kind of, it gives them a sense of the, um, something to the outside world. It also gives them a sense of pride. And a lot of the other uh, prisoners, when we're walking to the classroom, will be saying, oh, you're, you're here to teach that math class? Make sure and teach all those smart students in there. So um, they, you know, they, they know around the yard that they're also respected in the yard for their education, not for you know something else that you really shouldn't be respected for. And my hope is that this program continues to grow um, so that we can touch a lot more people out there. And um, I think that's about it for my portion. And so I'll turn it back over to Dr. Wells.